didn't do this so beautiful. Really brief, really brief on green light. If, yeah, it will come out today, but I'm, I'm, I'm about one minute to lie. So, yeah, if this is coming out, we'll just let, we'll just, okay. Right, so welcome everybody. I am not gonna start until I see at least 300 people tune in. Right now, I have a hundred people uh, sign in already. So please spread, share the video, share the broadcast. Once we hit 300 people, actually, when we hit 400 people. I will go live. So please, thanks for tuning in. Go ahead, share the video. Let's get as many people in here locked in as possible. Share the video, share on Facebook, share on Twitter, share on the, uh, every social media platform. Let people come in. We have very interesting, very important information to pass out to you today. And let me know where you are logging in from. If you are logging in from Europe, from Camer from, uh, from, from Ambazonia, you're logging in from Canada, you're logging in from, uh, you're logging in from, uh, wherever you're logging in from, please, let me know where you're logging in from, indicate it on your screen. Let me know where you are joining in from. So please let me know where you're logging in from. I have 140, uh, 150 people right now. Once we hit 400 people watching, I will start the broadcast. When you log in, please let me know where you're logging in from. Evergreen, South Carolina, USA. I see you, Princess Carl Inyonga from London. Thank you. Uh, and uh, Olivier Che Nde Aga, watching from London, Kwafa from Europe, from Paris, Aggie, uh, somewhere a boat from Cape Town, South Africa. I see Lexus Mbo from USA. I see Ikema Johnson from Mamfe. I see uh, Faustinos Fochi from uh, Ottawa. I see Naka, Naka General from Houston. Wow, that's my home. Then I see Beatrice in, Beatrice in default from Norway. I see Awun Ingang from the Netherlands. I see Desmond from, from Washington, D.C. I see Brown, Brown Sage from Brussels. I see Godwin Delian came from Tombell. Are you watching on SCBC? Uh, uh, in Tomba, let me know, please. Be give me a message. Then I see in Kama Mickey from U United Arab Emirates. I see Castro Lisbon, Lisa, it's a little hard name there, from Minnesota, USA. I see Tangwa, Tangwa Edwin from California. I see Mimi Bibich from Bristol. I believe that is England. Please, we have 200 and 22 people lock in right now when we have 400 people i will start the broadcast so please send out the information share the videos let people join us so that we can get this information to as many people as possible and i also see matasha is watching from paris i see in data jew watching in from arlington texas I see Godi Go watching, go, watching, watching from uh, Singapore. I see Amber Landa in Zire watching from Nigeria. I see also Amber or oh, the same person. So please keep logging in, spread the video, spread, share the video. Let's get as many people logging as possible before I start the broadcast.
I see Elvis. Elvis uh, Munya from Washington, D.C. And also Peter Junior Taco Fondo from Sweden. And I see Mafo, Mafo Akafo from the UK. Well, I see Bamenda here. Dema Leona, Bamenda. Uh, Jude Ebai watching from Kenya. And I also see Toby Samson Toby watching from Cameroon. Are you from La Republic? I told you are from Ambazonia. All right. I see also Einstein Wemgong watching, watching from Dubai. Please, I have 285 people right now, a little over 100 more before we start the broadcast. Please share the, share the video. We want to hit at least 400 people before we start the broadcast. 302 right now. So a little over 100 to go before we start the broadcast. I see pride in B. Ago from Portsmouth. That, that's definitely England, I guess. And I see also Amber Lucas from Douala. And there is also uh, Priscilla Atem King watching from Washington, D.C. I see uh, Cho Choboy Amber watching from Russia. I see Kalusha Buraya watching from Paris. Please keep coming in. We have exact, we need 75 people more to go. Just 75. Share the video, please. I see Asad Shamo from San Antonio, Texas. Freedom Ambers from Geneva. Jude Ebai from, uh, no, it doesn't have the location. And we have uh, Ojon Piran Ayuk watching from Paris. There is also uh, Ne Ingia watching from Germany. We have 350 people locked in right now. 50 more people, please, and we'll start the, the broadcast. Marseille Info, watching from Dubai. Felicia Info, watching from Maryland. And uh, Ufa Nogzin Hong, watching from Maryland. We have just a little of a, we need just more, just uh, 35 people more and we go live with the broadcast. Please, 35 people more, share, 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 share the video. Less than 35 people until we start the broadcast. Yes, the number is increasing. We have 380, 20 people more, and we start the broadcast. Ten people more, we start the broadcast. Share the video, please. If you are just logging in, please share the video so we can start the broadcast. Share the video. If you're just logging in, let's get as many people as possible uh, so I can start the broadcast. I see Ingwa Irene Sue Infombin. Say hi, Chris, watching from Ireland. Thank you. Please spread the video. Now we have 430 people watching live right now. And I want to go live with the broadcast. I want, to, I, I want to thank all of you for tuning in to this broadcast. Uh, the information I bring to you today is very vital, very, very important as uh, pertain to the revolution. And before I start, I want you to know that our revolution could never be stronger. Nobody out there should have any fear, not the least fear, that, or, or any worry as per the direction, as per where we are today in this revolution, going, going, going by the things that have happened. And I want you to know that I am coming to you today to give you updates of the, the abduction of our leaders, what we are doing at the interim government to secure their release, and also there is a lot of false propaganda 
I mean, propaganda out there coming especially from La Republic of Cameroon, their television station, CRO TV, the newspapers, Vision 4 TV, and many other uh, news outlets in La Republic of Cameroon. They are sending out lots of propaganda, and I want you to know, nobody should want to believe in any piece of information that CRO TV and all other propaganda channels for La Republic of Cameroon is sending out there. And so I'm going to be bringing you the state of the struggle as we have it today. And also I will be talking about schools resumption. And I will also be giving you uh, some uh, uh, plans for the demonstrations that we are having in the diaspora. And also most importantly, fundraising for this revolution. If we've ever needed money, it is now that we need that money. And so again, welcome. Thanks for joining me. Uh, I want you to know that since yesterday, since when our leaders were arrested last Friday, this interim government has been working 24 hours to not only know where they are, but to secure their unconditional release. As I come to you today, there is no evidence that they committed any crime, at least not from the Nigerian government, not from any source in Nigeria. So I want us to note that they did not commit any crime. Secondly, nobody has been able to contact them. So essentially, nobody knows where they are. But the assurance we know for sure, the information I want you to take home today is, even though nobody has seen them, nobody has met them, we know for sure that they are in Nigeria. Being in Nigeria, efforts have been made since we can to get them released, to access where the location where they are. We have not been able to access that location. However, we have a team of lawyers who are in Nigeria, as I speak, working to release, to secure the release of our leaders. That is the latest information I bring to you today. Our leaders have not been seen. They have not been spoken to. Not even their families have been able to reach them. The Nigerian government has been contacted, but they have not given anyone access to our, to our leaders. And so right now, the lawyers we are working with in Nigeria are following the legal process of having them released. That is what I can tell you. Again, I must add that they have not been charged for anything. In fact, nobody understands, nobody knows why they were arrested in the first place. And so what I want you to understand is the interim government is doing everything possible to secure the release of our leaders. Now, one thing that I like to add is that when I first came on TV, I think two days ago, or was it yesterday, to bring you news of the arrest. We, I mentioned that nine of them plus the president, which means a total of 10 of them are missing. Actually, the number seems to be growing. There are indications that we may have up to 13 people that uh, were involved or participating in that meeting. Now we know of 10. Right now, we're also having to include the name of Barrister Shufai Blaise Berignu. He is alleged to have been in that meeting because since that Friday, nobody has been able to reach him and he has not reached anybody. So we are including his name, the name of Barrister Blaise Shufai Berignu in the, in, the, in the official list that we sent out. So right now, 
confidently we can say 11 people including the president have not been accounted for so that is what other names may still come up we are not sure yet but this is the information the information will continue to get new information as the days go by so that is that but i want to stress the fact that nobody out there should be troubled nobody out there should be worried we are totally in control of this situation and no matter for how long they are held in custody this revolution continues on petu it continues on this stuff we are focusing not just on getting them released we are equally focusing on continuing with the agenda of the revolution and so we want this message to go to la republic du cameroon and their officials if they think that the arrest and their complicity with the nigerian government in the abduction of our leaders if they think that in doing this they are going to hinder or stand on the way or crumble this revolution for a minute for a second again they are mistaken Sisiku Ayoktabi, our interim president, I remember has said it again and again and again and again. He stated that this revolution is not built upon one person, upon any individual. And so if Mr. Beer and his gang, if they think that if they take out one of us, the revolution crumbles, he is mistaken. They are mistaken. As I said the other day, they will have to take out 8 million of us and Bazonians before this revolution will die. They will have to kill all of us before this revolution will die. And so I want to encourage each and every one of us out there that we are pursuing the vision of this revolution. And until we get to Boya, there is no looking back. There is no turning back. This revolution is in a train, a train that just keep that just continues moving forward. And so again, I want to make sure that every one of us is at peace with what is going on. Please, if you do not want to be worried, do not listen or watch anything or accept anything coming out of CRTV and other news networks sponsored by. La Republic du Cameroon. CRTV and the government of Cameroon is out there telling everybody that our leaders captured are already in Cameroon. That is not true. We have pertinent information. We have authentic information that all our leaders are still on the ground in Nigeria. But take note. We have no doubt here at the interim government that the abduction of our leader came without a complete, I mean, came with the complicity of La Republic du Cameroon. And we are appealing to the Nigerian government to remember the relationship that exists between Ambazonia, the Southern Cameroons, and the Federal Republic of Nigeria. We are appealing to the Nigerian government to understand we are brothers and release our abducted brothers, our abduct, abducted leaders back to us. And, and so, whatever the CRTV is putting out there, please, our leaders are not in Cameroon. What CRTV in La Republic is doing they want you to believe that our leaders are in their captivity so that you wave your hands and give up and say, oh, the revolution is over. This revolution isn't over. And consider this. Even if they were in Yaoundé now, does that mean Ambazonia have no other leaders who can take over this struggle? If they were taken to Yaoundé, I can assure you, this revolution has only just caught fire. There is reinvigoration right now in this struggle. And it has only hardened our hearts 
to take this struggle to its expected end. And I said yesterday that for, 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 for as long as I remain a member of this interim government, we in this interim government are never going to enter into any kind of arrangement, any kind of an agreement with La Republic du Cameroon that does not include Boya as our independent headquarters of Ambazonia. Let's take note of that. That is certain. It is non. It is, it is innegotiable. We are not negotiating that. We are for independence. We don't want federation. We don't want decentralization. We don't want some commission that cares not that cares less about us. I'm talking about the Musonge Musonge Commission. That commission has been in existence since the crisis began. What has it done? Can the government show us just one thing? Just one thing that that commission has done? Absolutely nothing. And so there is every evidence on the table that Mr. Beer and his government have given up on resolving this crisis. And as a result, your interim government is now resolved more than ever before to take us to Boya. Have no doubt about this. And so, we at the interim government, we are calling upon every citizen in the diaspora. We are calling for a peaceful protest, a peaceful protest in every nation where we have a Nigerian high commission or a Nigerian embassy. The various country heads will be bringing you that information. But between now, between now and Thursday, we need every one of us to go out in our numbers with the flags of the Southern Cameroons to every Nigerian mission in the diaspora. Please, let's step out in our numbers. Every the country, the region, the regional heads will give you detailed information as per the day and the time. But between today and Thursday, we want every Ambazonian, every Southern Cameroonian to go out to every Nigerian mission in Europe, in Canada, in the US, in Asia. Please, we are sending out a letter that will be taken to the Nigerian high, these high commissions. We want the Nigerian government to know we need them to cooperate in releasing our brothers, our leaders, our president and his team. So if you are out there in Europe, if you are out there in Asia, if you are out there in Canada, in the USA, please, arrangements are being made. Call your country leaders and find out when the demonstration, when the peaceful protest is taking place. It is very, very important that we repeat what we did at the beginning of this, uh, this crisis. We remember that at the beginning of the crisis, we reached out in our numbers all over the world, all over Europe and the USA, and we brought our message to the world. Right now, we have a good reason to do so again. We reach out to the world when Barista Agobala, Dr. Fontaine Neba were hurt in jail. Right now, our leaders are abducted. We don't even know where they are. How can we stay home and be comfortable knowing that we do not know their whereabouts? And so please, let's take this as a burden. Every Southern Cameroonian, no matter where you may be except in the homeland, please, in the homeland, stay at peace. Stay calm. Remain calm. We are not asking you to go out and do anything other than observe the ghost towns. Please, if you are in the homeland, we are not, we are not asking you to go out and demonstrate. We are not asking you to go to the Nigerian embassy, but we are asking you to enforce the ghost town and the non-school resumption. But in the diaspora, we are taking the message to the international community that the Nigerian government is holding our leaders captive. 
it is again international conventions for Nigeria to hold refugees captive. And so that is the message that we are taking out to uh, the protest rallies beginning uh, uh, tomorrow, Tuesday, the, uh, January, uh, January 9. So please make phone calls, make phone calls to everybody in your community and remind them of the protest rallies. Again, the regional heads will, in, will, are in charge of arranging for these rallies. They will pass the information to you once they get their permit for the, for the rallies. They will pass the information to you and you will be informed right when the, those rallies are taking place. And uh, again, I want to make a very special appeal. Our leaders, again, they are held in Nigeria. And we have to hire a team of lawyers to, to release them and get them back to us. This financial need is adding to the burdens of having to feed and accommodate the close to 4,000 refugees that we have in Nigeria. Please, we need your help. We need your donation. If you want to see our leaders, our president release, if you want to see our leader, our president release, please, we are appealing to each and every one of us Ambazonian. Even if you are not Ambazonian and you have the burden of this struggle, please consider going online ambazoniagov.org again the website ambazoniagov.org to make a donation you can also make a donation through your country your country head please we need this urgently if you care about this revolution if you care about its success if you care about what is happening now if you care about our president Sisiko Julius Ayuktabi, if you care to see their freedom, please, please go online right now. Make a donation so we are able to take care of the legal bills that we have to take care of in Nigeria. This is very, very important. And even if you are in Cameroon, in Ambazonia, you can also make that donation. You may be in Douala, in Yaoundé, Bafusa. Please and you have this struggle, this struggle in your heart, you can, you can also support this struggle by making a donation. No amount is too small. Again, the website is ambagov.org or ambazoniagov.org. When you get there, you will see a donation link where you can put in your donation. This is a, that is a very special appeal. And let me again mention uh, the school resumption. The interim government has stated plain and clear that until the conditions that we put on the ground are met, there shall be no school resumption in Ambazonian territory. Now remember, we are no longer taking any instructions from the Republic of Cameroon. We make our own rules we we'll make our own regulations and we'll go by them. It doesn't matter if La Republic says schools must start. We have said schools are not starting. And we encourage you, if you're a parent, do not waste your money in school fee because you will lose that money. It will never be refunded to you. Please keep your children home before they are, they are attacked, before they get shot at, by La Republic of Cameroon soldiers. No school resumption until the conditions we put on the ground are met. Until all our brothers in jail, including Manto BBC, are released. No schools resumption until all the refugees who are equally students and teachers in Nigeria are released. 
no school resumption until all the troops, all the occupational troops of La Republic do come around on our streets, in our towns and cities and villages, especially Manu, until when they are all pulled out back into their territory. Until these conditions are met, no schools will resume in our territory. Again, before I round up this uh, briefing and take some questions, if you have a question, please put your question on the screen. I will be taking questions very, very soon, very, very soon. I will take a few questions before I shut down the, the broadcast. So if you have a question, just begin to put it on the screen, and uh, I will just randomly take them and answer them as much as I can. But before I get there, I want to reemphasize the point that our, our leaders are safe, they have not been seen, they have not been spoken to, but the intelligence we have on the ground say they are in Nigeria and they are safe. Very, very important. All right. I like to take your questions now, if I can find any. Please, if you have questions, put them here. Let me answer them. Some people are asking, what is the next move? What is the next move? Of course, you know that it's, very, it's immature for me to come on, this, on television and tell you what the government is, is planning to do. We cannot do that. But rest assured that we are working hard. We have plans on the table to rescue this situation and move this government forward. If I do not see a question, then I will have to shut down the broadcast. Let me give you about five more minutes. If you have a question, please put it on the screen. Let me answer them before I leave. Uh, AFK Nado, Nado right. Is there any proof that our leaders are safe? Yes, sir. As you heard me say a few minutes ago, our leaders are safe. We have intelligence that they are safe. And we are doing everything to get them released. Let's hope that maybe today, maybe tomorrow, maybe Wednesday, they are all released. That is our hope. But rest assured, everything is being done to get them released. Ship broker. Oh, I lost that. I missed that. Julius Ortiz, right? Secretary Chris, we hear our president and our interim government are in Yaoundé. Now, is this true? The answer is no. You have heard me say we have intelligence that our leaders are still in Nigeria and they are safe. So please, the information that they are in Yaoundé, they are in Cameroon, is not true. CRTV, in the regime in Yaoundé, they are trying to play on your intelligence so that you get psychologically defeated knowing that the leaders are in their custody. That is not true. We will get them out and we will present a press conference when that, when that happens, and you will know for real what I'm saying here. They are not in Yaoundé. Thank you, Aunt Ayuka, for the compliment. And uh, let me tell you another question. Seacott Judson Wright, has any authority in Nigeria confirmed that the government is holding them or is ill out of public to come around holding them? in the hideout in Nigeria. Sikot, what we know right now is that they are in Nigeria. They are safe in Nigeria. We have intelligence that tells us they are in Nigeria. And one thing is sure, there is a complicity between Nigeria and La Republic of Cameroon, which is still keeping them locked up. And as days unfold, we will unveil what is going on. So please, they are safe. They are in Nigeria, not in Yaoundé. 
Doc Nick Santos asked, was the arrest the work of the GSS or the work of specialized kidnappers hired by our inside hitmen of La Republic du Cameroon? Santos, all we know for now is that armed men, 12, I think 12 of them, stormed the hotel. I, according to the information that we received, they were dressed in the Nigerian secret, society, secret security uniforms. So they were dressed as Nigerian, uh, uh, Nigerian police or army, whatever. There were 12 of them. We have no other information as to whether they were just disguising and putting on the Nigerian uniforms. That is all that we can say for now. Abdul Karim Kampol Evis, right, Mr. Secretary. I'm sorry that uh, Abdul Karim, right, Mr. Secretary. What happened? What? I'm sorry, the, the screen is just rolling. So, Mr. Secretary, what happened? They have not been given access. Oh, I'm sorry. The messages are the messages are coming in really quick, so I can't hold on to this. Mr. Secretary, what happened that they have not been given access? They have not been given access uh, up to this moment. These are things that these are questions we cannot rightly answer now. We will find out what is what is happening. Our lawyers are trying to investigate what is going on. As I said from the beginning of the broadcast, nobody not even any of the family members have spoken to them. So right now, nobody has been given access to them. Daniel Tabe right. why did the president choose Nigeria for meeting, for the meeting, even after the, the Nigeria High Commission met Paul Beer? I cannot explain uh, other than that. The president has, has, has been based in Nigeria and most of the people who were in that meeting, at least 99% of them are based in Nigeria. So you can imagine that it was very logical for them to have that meeting in Nigeria. And also considering that the meeting was about the refugees who are also in Nigeria. So it was very logical that they had that meeting right there in Nigeria. Olivier Che in the rise. You talked of 13 arrested earlier, but confirm, but confirm only one further. Yes, Olivier, as I said, there are chances that there are up to 13, 14 uh, of them. Right now, we can account for 11, including the one that uh, the name I mentioned today by Mr. Shufai Blaze Very New. We added his name to the list. To, make, to bring it up to 11 today. Now, there are chances that there may still be orders that we do not yet know. So we are trying to investigate to see if you know, other person else is missing. Ma Ma Mario Zagalo writes, we heard LROC send helicopter to Nigeria to take them to Yaoundé. Is that true? Again, the question is, we heard La Republic du Cameroon send helicopters to Nigeria to take them to Yaoundé. One thing we know for sure is that Cameroon sent in their agents, their administration representatives to Nigeria after our leaders were arrested. What they went there to do is still a subject of investigation. We will bring you further details on that subject next time once we get developments. All 
Okay, Njawe Miss Color, right. Have have you as a government been able to speak to the Nigerian authorities? If no, have have you requested audience with the Nigerian authorities? Of course, uh uh what's the name? Of course, uh, uh, uh comrade Njawe. Our lawyers are doing that, are playing that role. They are reaching out to the Nigerian authorities. We have representatives on the ground in Nigeria who are working with them as I speak, who are working with our lawyers to uh, reach uh, the Nigerian government. So again, you can trust that everything is being done to reach out to the Nigerian government and our, our detainees. Marcellus Atanga, he writes, what measures is the, what, me, what, what measures are the, what measures are being taken, oh, excuse me, I don't have, uh, the messages are just uh, scrolling on the screen and uh, every time I look, they scroll over. So what measures are being taken by the cabinet to ensure that the ghost town are effective or is enough to say? Let me just answer the question. We have we are we are taking every step to ensure that ghost towns are effective in every part of our county, in Fako, in Manu, in Meme, in Mezam, in the BLM, every county. If you love this struggle and you love our leaders, please. Be a personal enforcer to make sure that this ghost town is respected. Again, the ghost town continue tomorrow up to Wednesday. After Wednesday, if we are not satisfied with what we see right now, we may extend it. But please, do everything that you are from your own personal position to see that ghost town is enforced, is respected, in every town and city and village in the southern Cameroons. I am going to take the last question right now and I will go off the screen. E.T. Henry writes, Hello, sir. When Bara was in custody, we... All right, that uh, Christian just rolled over again. Can find it. Okay. Hello, sir. When Bala was in custody, we move on with with his struggle from a government. Now, I think the, I think what Et is trying to ask is when Bala was in custody, the struggle moved on, and it became a government. What are we doing now? Again, as I explained from the beginning. We are doing exactly what we did when Bala, Dr. Fotem, and Bancho they were in custody. There was never a puncture, a stop to the activities of the interim government. And whether they release our leaders or not, you can rest assured there will be continuity in this revolution. Until we get to Boya, we are not looking back. And so as we fight to get our leaders released, you can rest assured that we are working hard every day to, to see that this revolution continues. Now, let me make a little important point here. The president explained that we have a vice president. Many people do not know who that vice president is. We have deliberately refused to name him or to call him out for security purposes. Our vice president lives in the home front. As this situation goes on, he is in constant contact with the interim government. He is giving directions, he is giving instructions, and the cabinet is taking care of those instructions. But for the cause of this uh, situation, you are not going to hear from the, from the vice president you are not going to see him because we do not want to compromise his security. 
that for the continuity of this revolution and the work of the interim government, you can rest assured that work is going on. There will be no disruption. We are focused onto our destiny in Boya. And before I go, I just want to remind you again, this situation demands that we all put our hands in our pocket and donate to save, to rescue our leaders. Please, let's donate generously. That is the only thing we can do. We can't go around like the lawyers do looking for them. But we can give money that takes the lawyer to where they are. So wherever that you may be, please go to the website ambagov.org or ambazoniagov.org make a good donation. Let's save our leaders. Again, whenever there are developments, I will come back to you to brief you. Every day we will make sure that you have updates of what is going on, especially in this particular situation where our leaders are abducted. When there are developments, you can trust that I will come or Comrade Milton will come and communicate to you. We want to keep you informed. And again, do not believe or swallow any lie coming from CROTV. Their goal is to discourage you to, to have the impression that the revolution is dead. It is not dead. We are more than alive. I mean, more than ever before. And we must live free or die. Thanks for tuning in. I look forward to coming to you again, maybe tomorrow. You have a blessed night. I'm Chris Arnold.